Hey, what's happening guys? Today I want to talk a little bit about the IC7300 uh, ham radio transceiver from ICOM. And I've had this radio going on about a year now. So I thought I'd just give you some uh, of my take on it. After seeing it for that long and using it for that long, and what I've found, what I see, you know, things along that nature. So let's power it up. You can hear my it connecting to my computer. So first of all, one of the first things you see when you play with this radio is, of course, the big, beautiful waterfall and spectrum display. I mean, that that's the selling point of it. And uh, I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but right now, R&L Electronics here in Ohio is selling the 7300 with a power supply for $999 if you're outside of the state of Ohio. If you're inside, yeah, you're going to have to pay taxes on that. Anyway, it's a great radio at that price. Now, you see the waterfall display, and then up above it, you see the spectrum display. And the spectrum display is just like what you would see on a spectrum analyzer. You know, the green line there is, of course, our, uh, our noise floor. And then the peaks that you see above the noise floor, well, those are the signals. And then, of course, you can come and tune in on the signals. They, of course, they just stopped talking as soon as I tried to get there. And, of course, there's a train coming because, you know, that's what happens. Let's see. Are you going to say anything? We'll wait till after the train. Okay, so there we go. Now, one th odd thing that you might notice is that the tuning indicator up here is actually off to the side of the signal, and that's because we are in lower. Well, you can't see that. We are in lower sideband because we are below 10 megahertz. So we're listening to the lower sideband. The tuning indicator is actually pointing to where the carrier would be if there was a carrier, but we're doing single sideband, so there's no carrier here. But anyway, that's just a quick look at the spectrum scope. And like I said, that is definitely the selling point of this radio. Now, what I think makes this radio even more appealing to uh, a new hams or experienced hams, it doesn't matter, is it's pretty intuitive. Um, yeah, you got your big tuning knob here, you got your volume knob here, and then you look at this and you say, twin PBT, well, what, what's that? So you look it up in the manual, and it says twin passband tuning, and you're still like, okay, I don't quite understand. So you turn the knob, then you get this, whoop, you get this little picture, it doesn't stay very long. And you're like, oh, okay, well, look, that one's moving that way. If I turn the back knob, this one moves this way. Oh, I see. So it's kind of like uh, an IF shift combined with maybe a notch. But what it's basically doing is it is allowing you to shape the passband. It's, it's intuitive. Once you once you start touching it, you can see what it does. Same thing. You know, there's three filters here. Well, what do they do? Well, if you press and hold it. It brings up your filter here. You see PB1, PB2, bandwidth, default, our filter width, and the size of it. And again, you can just start playing with it and gathering an understanding of it. Bandwidth. What's our bandwidth? Look. Oh, oh, look at that. I can adjust my bandwidth up to 3.6K. And I can take it down to 50 hertz. Well, that's incredible, right? I mean, how cool is that? So like I said, you, you just start to understand it once you play with it a little bit. It's very intuitive. Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about is the noise reduction. And the noise reduction in this radio is fantastic. Let's turn it off. Metal bars that push right against that sciatic nerve, man. 
Ah, yes. Old men talking about their health problems. But you hear the, the fuzziness in the background. We turn on the noise reduction, and it's pretty much gone. It's like listening to FM. It's beautiful. And then with almost every button on this radio, if you press and hold, it brings up a separate menu where you can adjust it. Very cool. Now, the radio has a built-in tuner that works very well, up to a three, three to one match, but you'll notice here I have an external tuner. It has nothing to do with the internal tuner of the radio. It is simply to do with the fact that I am running an amplifier and when I'm running the amplifier the tuner needs to be at the end of the chain before the antenna and the internal tuner would be at the beginning of the chain so it just doesn't work out that's just the way you have to do it okay again talking about the intuitiveness of this radio I mean if we just hit the menu button here you can see we have scope audio voice meter SWR. Now this SWR is pretty cool. Let's uh, let's talk about that. Let me find a empty spot here in the spectrum. All right. Now we'll bring up this SWR graph, and I'm going to zoom in here just a little so you guys can get a better look at this. Now what we have here is it says recall play step. Our step is set for 10k 13. We're going to be able to do 13 steps here, and we're going to be going from 7.066 up to 7.186. And the way you do it is you press the play button, and then you just quickly uh, key the mic. Just like that. And now you can see there is a 1 to 1 SWR, that red line is 1 to 5. You can see here it's 7.138.64 with my antenna tuner on. We're down way below. So here's what we'll do. We'll uh, bypass the antenna tuner. And we'll do it again here. This is without the tuner. This is just where my antenna sits. It's right at about 3 to 1. So not a beautiful thing there. <laughs> basically anything that you want to adjust here you can adjust you can just you can just start pushing buttons and you know if you want to touch something and find out what it does like for instance up here it says lower sideband if we just touch it it brings up all of our modes single sideband cw ready am fm data if we touch the uh frequency it brings up our frequency so that we can change bands by simply touching here. You know, if we want to go to 20 meters, we just touch that. Boom, we're in 20 meters. And uh, again, with, with the tuner, our tuner integrates very nicely with the external tuner simply by pressing a button. You can hear the external tuner grabbing a tune right now. And we're good. We'll go back to here and we're back in tune you can see the tune indicators on and that indicates that we are tuned up very well one of the functions I see people talking about a lot that I don't really use is this audio scope now if we come over and tune on to a conversation here you can see um, the audio frequency in the time domain here and the audio frequency over here in the frequency domain. Uh, maybe that's useful if you're into Morse code CW. I, I just don't see a point in it. I, I may basically sit here with the scope function on. I'm, that's why I bought the radio. That's what sold me on the radio is being able to see this portion of the uh, the band. Now I'm looking from uh, 7.13 to 7.178 somewhere in there. But we can change that. Anyway, we're in the center. 
mode where the center frequency is always right here. If I change this to the fixed mode, we're now looking at almost the entire band. And you can see we are from 7.1 up to 7.2 there. Like I said, it's almost the entire band. I can change that by pressing the edge button. And now we're looking at 7 to 7.8. So this is mostly the digital portion of the band. If we come down here, we should be able to find some uh, some Morse code. There's some Morse code, and if I hit the auto tune button, you can hear the Morse, and that's a pretty weak signal. And of course it's gone. Let's find another one. As soon as I want to talk about them, they're gone. There we go. Quite busy there. <laughs> but anyway, that's the edge feature. And, uh, See, now we're looking at the digital portion. This is what we were looking at before. And then up here, we're looking at the higher edge of the band. And you can watch, because my tuning indicator is way off to the left, as soon as I bring it up, we can come up in here, hook up on a station. Try and get him tuned in. There you go. So, my thoughts after using this thing for about a year. And I just covered a couple things here. There's so much more it can do. This multi button here alone is a selling point all by itself here. Uh, it works fantastically with your computer in the digital modes, um, except for one thing. A lot of RF comes out of this radio, and I found out... Now, hold on, I'm going to move you here. Hang on to your hats. Definitely had to put ferrite beads, extra ferrite beads, on my USB cable. Or the thing would just kick out as soon as I tried to use it. But after using this thing for a year, it is a superb radio. It's not perfect. No radio is perfect. Um, if you're a contester that wants to listen to uh, two different bands at the same time, this is not going to do it. But for the general purpose ham, I mean, even if you're a serious de this is fantastic. This, it, it is super fantastic. You can come in here and set the reference level of the waterfall display to pick out the weakest signals that you can possibly imagine. ICOM has just done a great job. Um, it only has one antenna port, that's another downside. But if you use an external antenna tuner, you know, they generally have two or more antenna ports. Um, the noise reduction is fantastic, the noise blanker does almost nothing. The auto notch feature, meh, it's okay. It's a great radio, and right now the price is superb, right at $1,000. If you don't mind the used market, I've seen them go for as little as $800, but $850 to $875 seems to be about the selling point. The radio is about three years old. I mean, mine's not. Mine was a, a 2018 model. I'm talking about the release date. It's about three years. Um, I think the biggest telling point is going to be the lifespan of the touchscreen. Because everything that you want to do with this radio, 
you do it with the touch screen. Everything. Everything is done with the touch screen. So if the touch screen were to die, you would have a serious problem. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to, I mean, you could, you could definitely hook it up to HRD, Ham Radio Deluxe, and control it from the computer, but why would you want to do that? I mean, this is the reason that you bought it. This is the reason that you want to use it. This screen here alone is another fantastic selling point on the radio. This shows you every one of your transmit meters. Um, automatic level control, compression, SWR, uh, current at the finals, uh, your input voltage, and the uh, a basic temperature at the finals. I mean, so phenomenal. I'm rambling. I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to tell you my overall opinion. You can't go wrong with this radio. If you're looking for an HF radio, whether it's your first or your third, the ICOM 7300 is phenomenal. Like I said, it has its downsides. It's not a contesting radio. It only has uh, the one antenna port. The antenna tuner is only good for about a three to one match. Those are some minor downsides. It is also not a very big radio. Let me grab my scale here. And if we take a look at this, you're looking at a width of about 23 centimeters, a height about 9, and a depth of about 23, 24 It'll go portable. It's light enough. I'm assuming it's rugged enough. All right, I've rambled on enough. I know a lot of you guys aren't ham radio fans, but I am, and my channel, so I get to talk about what I want. <laughs> I, I don't say that to be a smart uh, ass. I'm just saying, you know, it's one of the things that interests me. Maybe seeing stuff like this will help interest you. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it. I'm out. Peace.